So today we're going to look at the Field Move Clino app, which is the app in the upper left here with the rock hammer and the red and white stripe through it. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it'll open uh, to this little stereo net dial with a strike and dip symbol. We haven't used before though, we want to set up a new project. We want to click those three buttons uh, in the upper left hand corner. And then down at the bottom, we want to click on switch projects. At the bottom of this uh, page, hit the plus button. And you'll open up this window for project details. So you can give it a new name. I'm going to call mine Earth uh, 496 Project 2. Uh, declination will be set automatically. That's just a compass difference from true north. Uh, and then you can put a locality number in front of any points you take. Uh, for this exercise, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to shorten it to LOC. You can hit Done when you're finished with that uh, to submit the information, and then go back to the Compass and Clino, which is the button at the top. Click uh, Tap to add a rock unit uh, in order to add a couple units. And I have Vertical. I'm going to add uh, Horizontal. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the plus button again to hit inclined. And this is just going to help us keep track uh, of some of the different types of planes that we're going to measure uh, while we take a quick look at this StereoNet app. Okay, so you're moving your phone around, uh, and the red uh, strike and dip symbol moves as the strike and dip plane. When you want to take a measurement, when you're ready, you just tap the screen, uh, and it turns black, and it's frozen, and then you can hit save to save your locality. That was just a simple inclined plane. I'll do another inclined plane in a different orientation. Freeze and save. Uh, now I'm going to tap a color bar at the side to uh, switch to a different color line. I'm going to do a vertical one here. So the line and the stereo net is going to become straight up and down uh, through the stereo net. Tap and save. And then I'll just do an example of a horizontal line here. And so I'm going to re-rotate my phone uh, until you see that stereo net arc move all the way up to the side. And when you get right to horizontal, you see the strike and dip symbol flipped up. You can tap it and save it. All right, now we got four planes. We can click the three bars at the upper left and now hit stereo net. Uh, and here's uh, the planes we took. The orange one, uh, which is the vertical one, the two blue, which are the inclined. Uh, and then you can also see uh, the green one barely wrapping its way around the top at the very edge, uh, the horizontal plane. So now that we've seen how to use this and look at the stereo net results, uh, let's see it in action. I'm a geologist. Uh, it turns out I have rocks in my yard. Bought rocks before I bought plants or trees. Uh, but they come in handy today because uh, we can demonstrate how to measure strike and dip on bedding planes. And this happened to be a really nice um, bedded limestone. You might see some of the laminations in here. Uh, and so I'm sitting on a bedding surface, a nice flat bedding surface. Uh, and if the landscaper who installed these installed them correctly, he installed them perfectly horizontal. And so the surface of this should be very, very close to the flat. So let's put our compass on here. I'm using the same strike and dip scheme as I did last time. And this is perfectly horizontal. I'm going to tap that and save it. I'm using green for horizontal lines. Uh, I'll make a couple more measurements uh, on these various rock beds to see uh, if they all look like that. Wow, oh, he's doing a pretty good job. Let me grab two more. measurements, strike and dip measurements, on bedding planes um, that are horizontal. Uh, and we'll see what those look like in the stereo net in a second. Um, but as John talked about uh, earlier this morning, uh, strike and dip are two lines, two perpendicular lines, uh, any combination which uniquely defines the orientation of the plane in space. Uh, in this particular case, our plane is horizontal. So you can think of it as having no dip. Uh, if you poured water on here, it would just run every direction, not in a preferred direction downhill. Uh, and every strike. If you poured water against this particular plane, it wouldn't form a straight line of strike. It would just run all over the, the planar surface. So uh, this is an example I set of a horizontal bed, so it's a very unique strike and dip orientation, and we'll look at four of those on a second of the stereo net. Uh, but let's contrast that with some other types of planes. Uh, luckily, I also have a vertical rock around for us to take a look at. So let's go uh, check that one out. Okay. So this guy here is my vertical rock. Um, you can see he's got a slope top. But he's got a bunch of very, very steep sides on it. And I'm gonna switch here to my vertical planes. I'm gonna take a few measurements of the vertical sides of this rock. And now you'll see, although they're equally steep, they seem to quite clearly face in different directions. 
I think that's going to be pretty obvious when we look at them again in the stereo now. It'll be quite different from the horizontal pegs. And as I did before, uh, these are all recording in the color of orange. All right. So there's the front, two sides, and the back of this rock that stands quite upright. Uh, it has very vertical sides to it. And you saw them recorded on the phone as I was doing it. Uh, and we'll look at the stereo of these in a minute. As soon as we go collect one more type of some incline planes. Okay. Well, it probably won't surprise any of you that I have more rocks in my backyard. Uh, and here I have some ones with some nice inclined surfaces of various steepnesses uh, and various orientations. So I'm just going to measure about five of these, and I'm going to measure these in the color blue. Uh, and we'll take a look at what those look like on the stereo net uh, as well. So I'm just going to work from left to right here. You can see how easy it is to measure these stripes and dips. You just lay your phone flat on the surface that you want to measure. Uh, and then you simply press the button to freeze. The uh, compass indicator and choose black. Hit save. Save the measure. Alright, one last one here. Alright, so a bunch of inclined planes. They're not horizontal. Uh, they're not vertical. Uh, we'll see what those look like as well is the results of the measurements that we happen to make with the stereo net, or with the stereo net app, uh, FieldMove Clino, uh, around my yard. So we used orange for vertical planes, and what you see is that the vertical planes have very, very little curvature. They're almost straight lines across the stereo net, um, but they're not all the same orientation. Uh, you see that there's two lines uh, that go east-west across the stereo net and two lines that go north-south, more or less. Now, that's not surprising because that rock that we measured, if you remember, happened to be almost equant. It had uh, four sides and two of each were parallel to one another. So when we measured strikes and dips on each of those sides, they have to be very similar to one another. But you can tell intuitively here, if you measure a plane that's vertical, it's going to have very little curvature and the orientation of that plane is going to change as the orientation of the, uh, sorry, the orientation of the line on the stereo is going to change as the orientation of the plane changes. Uh, now, we also measured four horizontal planes um, down uh, at the front of my yard. Uh, those you can hardly see here at all because they happen to be perfectly flat. They're wrapped around the outside of the stereo net uh, because that's where horizontal planes lie. And finally, there's a suite of inclined planes. Uh, you'll notice they have different curvatures because they have different amounts of inclination. Uh, and they have slightly different orientations because they were facing different ways. However, all of them were facing downhill towards my house, and so they plot in the same hemisphere on the stereo net because there was a somewhat preferred orientation to face those towards my home. As you go around measuring strikes and dips uh, in your local environment, uh, think about what you expect the measurements to look like. Think about what you think the distributions to look like uh, and why you might expect them to look that way. That'll be part of the question that we have you answered as you complete assignment number two.